Indominus Rex, artificially created, not born. She was never meant to be part of nature. Designed within the sterile walls of a laboratory by Dr. Henry Wu, her existence was not the product of evolution. It was a demonstration of what human ambition can create when limits are ignored. Measuring over 15 meters in length, 6.7 meters in height, and weighing 10.5 tons, she had the bite force of a Tyrannosaurus, the speed of a raptor, and the aggressiveness of a Giganotosaurus. She lured her prey into traps and deceived her handlers without hesitation. The Indominus ruled Isla Nublar as a true living nightmare. But what if we cloned this hybrid creature before she was swallowed by the Mosasaurus? and released her directly into the real world, more specifically, into the brutal chaos of the late Cretaceous? Would she have what it takes to survive in an era when dinosaurs weren't theme park attractions, but predators and prey shaped by millions of years of evolution? Let's find out. Just before the Mosasaurus dragged her into the depths of the ocean, we rescued her from the waters off Isla Nublar and sent her back, 70 million years into the past, to the late Cretaceous, where most dinosaurs are at their peak. This period was one of the most brutal and diverse in Earth's history, a world where predators and prey evolved in an endless arms race. No theme park, no surveillance, no trained raptors or fences, just a raw, prehistoric ecosystem. She wouldn't arrive as a goddess. She would arrive as an intruder, an anomaly created by human hands, dropped into a world that has no mercy for outsiders. Would her artificial power give her an advantage or lead her to death? It's time to find out what happens when fiction meets the fossil record. Before we release her into the wilds of the Cretaceous, we need to understand exactly what this creature is. The Indominus Rex wasn't created just to be dangerous. She was engineered to be unstoppable. Her DNA is a monstrous cocktail, mixed in secret, combining the deadliest traits of some of the most terrifying predators to ever walk the Earth. She carries the bite force and core structure of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, fused with the agility, intelligence, and problem-solving abilities of a Velociraptor. She also contains Giganotosaurus DNA, the horns and thick skull of a Carnotaurus, the massive hook-shaped claws of a Therizinosaurus, and other hidden genes we may never fully identify. But Dr. Wu didn't stop at prehistoric predators. He enhanced her with traits from modern animals, the chromatophore camouflage of a cuttlefish, allowing her to change color and texture based on her surroundings, and the thermal masking abilities of certain amphibians, which made her nearly invisible to infrared detection. And then, perhaps the most terrifying aspect, was her psychology. Raised in isolation, with no parental or social development, the Indominus was emotionally apathetic. She showed no empathy, no fear. She hunted not only for food, but for sport, for dominance, sometimes just to see what would happen. She learned from her mistakes, set traps, and manipulated other predators to suit her needs. While evolution shaped natural predators to conserve energy and avoid fatal risks, the Indominus was programmed for chaos, not because it made sense, but because it was inherent to her very core. She wasn't a product of survival. She was a demonstration of what happens when intelligence collides with unchecked creation. And now, this creation is about to meet a world that never asked for her. If Jurassic World was a stage, the late Cretaceous was a battlefield. This wasn't a controlled environment built for observation. It was an environment that shaped its own rulers through unforgiving natural law. The ecosystem she's entering is violently alive. Temperatures soar. Storms roll in without warning. Volcanic ash clouds blot out the sun. Forests stretch for miles, hiding both predator and prey. Water is scarce in the dry seasons. Disease runs rampant. Each day is a gamble. This was Earth at its most experimental. Geography constantly shifting, food chains in flux, life adapting on the fly. Unlike the simplicity of containment zones and artificial feeding systems Indominus knew before, this world responds to no schedule. It does not wait for predators to adjust. You either adapt quickly or you die quietly. And she's entering at the apex of danger. The late Cretaceous isn't just home to big dinosaurs. It's home to the most efficient ones. Creatures that didn't just survive for a few years under observation, but thrived across continents for millions of years. Being large here doesn't guarantee success. Being powerful isn't enough. Everything that walks or flies or swims in this time has something the Indominus lacks. Generations of built-in instinct, a cold, hard lineage shaped by pressure, scarcity, and blood. No guards, no walls, no meal deliveries. For the first time in her existence, she's not the queen of anything. She's alone, 
in a world that truly belongs to someone else. The moment the Indominus sets foot in this world, it stops being invincible. It isn't up against electric fences or confused herbivores. It's facing predators shaped by time itself. First, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the real one, not the aging, cinematic version from the park. In the Cretaceous, the T-Rex wasn't past its prime. It was in its prime. 12 to 13 meters long, weighing between 10.5 and 12 tons, and armed with the most powerful bite force ever recorded on land, capable of crushing bones like dry twigs. Its skeleton was a masterpiece of engineering, its senses razor sharp. It didn't need to be hybridized. Evolution did the job. Then there are the Dakota Raptors, real cousins of the Velociraptor, but far deadlier than their Hollywood counterparts. Five meters long, with curved claws on their hands and deceptive intelligence, they hunted in packs, not guided by programming or manipulation, but by pure survival instinct and surgical coordination. One wrong move from the Indominus, and she could find herself surrounded, shredded, and torn apart by creatures half her size but with twice her experience. And underwater? That's where the real nightmares wait for her. Dana Sucus, a prehistoric crocodilian nearly as long as the Indominus itself, lurks in lakes and riverbanks like a leviathan. One second near the wrong stream and she's dragged under, trapped in jaws engineered to kill dinosaurs. Even Albertosaurus and Ludoraptor, smaller theropods, apex predators relying on agility, terrain knowledge, or teamwork, pose a threat. They don't intimidate easily. They don't run unless forced. Because here's the difference. These predators weren't made to scare investors. They were made to survive everything. And now her life depends on unlearning everything she knows and surviving the only way this world understands, by earning her place. If Indominus expected prey to be easy targets, she's in for a brutal surprise. In the Cretaceous, herbivores don't run blindly. They fight, and quite often they win. Take the Triceratops, for example. Massive, territorial, and anything but defenseless. With a nine-meter frame and two horns over a meter long, it wasn't prey. It was a fortress on leg, and it didn't roam alone. It moved in herds, watching each other's backs, raising alarms at the slightest sign of danger. One wrong move, and the Indominus could find her Self gored straight through the chest in a matter of seconds. Then there's the Ankylosaurus, a living tank, armored from head to tail, bones fused into a natural shield, but its deadliest feature, that tail club, swung with enough force to shatter bone, even crack a skillfully avoided jaw. One solid strike could maim her, or worse, end the fight instantly. Add the Hadrosaurs like Edmontosaurus and Lambiosaurus. Often underestimated, but in reality, they operated in massive, tightly organized herds. Threaten one, and hundreds move as one. Stampedes that could flatten trees. Indominus might be used to showy kills in confined spaces, but out here, one mistake doesn't get corrected. It gets punished. These plant eaters were survivors of the most dangerous ecosystem in history. Just because they didn't eat meat doesn't mean they weren't monsters in their own right. In this world, even lunch fights back, and sometimes wins. She was built to kill, but not to last. For all her power, the Indominus Rex carries a fatal flaw. She was never meant to coexist with nature. Every trait she possesses is extreme. Every behavior, unchecked. She doesn't understand balance, only control. But in the Cretaceous, control doesn't exist. She lacks the inherited instincts that real predators depend on, learned behaviors passed down through generations. Instead, she relies on brute force, unpredictability, and raw aggression. That may win in isolated sparring, but out here, it's a death sentence. Exhaustion, risky decisions, unnecessary fights, all become liabilities. And more than that, her genetic makeup is unstable, spliced from multiple species, many of which never coexisted, her physiology may be working against her. Her metabolism, senses, and even immune system were not tested for survival beyond the lab. One infection, one broken limb, one mistake, and the most advanced predator ever created becomes just another fossil in the dirt. In a world where perfection doesn't exist, flaws are fatal, especially when you weren't evolved. You were assembled. But could she survive? Could that flaw be overcome? The answer is yes, but not in the way most imagine. At first, she'd struggle, badly. Her aggression may backfire, attacking a herd of hadrosaurs without knowing how they move, or underestimating a triceratops guarding its young could leave her battered or dead. She'd face predators that hit harder and think faster than anything she's encountered. No cameras, no trainers, just instinct versus learning. But in time, her greatest weapon wouldn't be her claws. It would be her mind. Unlike any other predator in that world, Indominus wasn't bound by instinct. 
she can observe, adapt, and evolve her tactics. She'd learn to hunt at night, using her thermal camouflage to ambush without being seen. She'd begin tracking herd migrations, targeting the weak or isolated rather than charging in headfirst. She might even avoid certain predators entirely, not out of fear, but out of strategy. Over months, we wouldn't see the same Indominus from the park. We'd see something else, a creature shedding its artificial design, slowly earning its place in a world that never wanted it. In the end, she survives, not because she's the strongest, but because she learns what every Cretaceous survivor did. You don't rule nature. You blend with it, or you die. But now we turn it over to you. Do you think the Indominus Rex could truly carve out a space in the wildest chapter of Earth's history? Or would she fall to the very laws of nature she was never meant to follow? Would her genetic power be enough, or would she become nothing more than an extinct anomaly, forgotten by time? Let us know your theory in the comments. If you enjoyed this dive into prehistoric speculation, hit the like, subscribe for more Science Meets Cinema analyses, and join us next time, where imagination goes extinct or evolves.